Good morning. It's tough to speak when it's uh, finally shiny outside. Um, so I hope to get you quickly out. Um, I'll try to, I have 10 minutes. Uh, I'll try to go quickly through the presentation. So just a few words about uh, Endeavor Mining. We are a highly focused West African company uh, with operation in uh, three countries, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire and Mali. Uh, we will be we're targeting about 700,000 ounces of production for this year, uh, but more importantly, with all in sustaining cost uh, below 800 uh, and uh, across our four operations. As um, you probably saw, Mark Bristow has decided to left Africa and to move to Toronto, so I will be speaking more about Africa, as he's probably going to be busy with Nevada and other things. So let me start with why we've been focusing on West Africa and so bullish about West Africa. First reason is uh, people doesn't always recognize that uh, West Africa is in fact the fourth largest uh, producing uh, region for gold, the third in terms of exploration budget, and the first discovery region over the last 10 years. So when we're talking about where do you want to focus to discover gold, West Africa is probably one of the prime sector you should look at. It's interesting coming back on fourth largest global you know, producing region. It's interesting to see when uh, you pinpoint you know, the other countries that are ahead of West Africa. It's basically China, Australia and Russia. So if as an investor uh, you, know, you see off limits around China and Russia, basically West Africa is the second largest region to invest in. In terms of exploration budget, and I tend to say to my guys, you know, um, follow the money. Follow where people are investing in exploration because this is where the next discoveries are going to happen. And if you look at, you know, in 2017, for example, the overall exploration budget, you know, for uh, West Africa was third after Canada and Australia. Uh, about 10% of the worldwide, you know, gold uh, exploration investment. But the other most interesting one is when you take 2016, 2006, 2016, you've got 79 million ounces discovered over a 10 years period in that region, uh, which is by far the largest region for discoveries. And that's ahead of Colombia, Chile, Canada, and even the US. So this is the area where people are investing, but more importantly, where people are discovering. In our case, we've been uh, geologically uh, focusing on uh, what we call the uh, Birimian Greenstone Belt. So I don't see if you see it well, but it's all the green part, uh, which is shadowed uh, on the map. And what's interesting is to see that uh, about 60% of that uh, Greenstone Belt basically lies in two countries, Burkina Faso and Côte d'Ivoire. But more importantly is that historically, you see that most of the discoveries were made in Mali and Ghana, which represent less than a third of this Birimian greenstone belt. The reason for that is because of geopolitical situation in Burkina Faso and Côte d'Ivoire, and therefore people were not investing in those two countries. But recently, there's been a big move in terms of investment into those two <coughs> countries, and there's been also a lot of discoveries. And we're proud to say that uh, we are today the largest gold producer in Côte d'Ivoire, we are the second largest gold producer in Burkina Faso, and in both countries we have the largest tenement package. So this has been our co-focus because we believe that big discoveries will come out from those two countries. The other important thing, and this is probably more linked to French West Africa in which we are operating, despite being French, uh, it happens that those countries pertain to the same economic zone, uh, and they have the same currency, uh, and they are moving towards more and more, um, I would say, common laws uh, and approach to tax and regulation, which means also much stronger stability uh, in those countries as they are part of this region. A bit like the European Union about uh, you know, 50, 60 years or, uh, away. Before that, we tend between German, the British and the France you know, to fight to each other. Uh, then we built European Union and even if Bre Brexit is around, uh, it's been bringing a lot of stability, and I think it's the same in West Africa. So through that, when you look at you know, all our competitors, Endeavor is emerging as the only multi-asset West African mid-tier producer in that region. So if you like West Africa, 
we operate in three of those countries and we're probably the only company with diversified portfolio in this region. Now in terms of profile, uh, as I mentioned, we want to focus on less assets but the right assets with key priorities around mine life and all in sustaining cars below 800. The main reason for all in sustaining cars below 800 is we want cash flow. We don't want to focus on assets which are not generating the right type of cash flow and therefore taking management time. We've been focusing for that on four levels, operational excellence, project development, exploration, and also portfolio and balance sheet management. In terms of operational excellence, uh, we have good safety records, and I think it's a, a good way to match with the wealth and the way you know, the, uh, the management uh, is uh, leading its operations. In terms of also operational excellence, we focus you know, our key people in West Africa. So we have a regional office where all our operating guys uh, you know, are based, chief operating officer, head of exploration. They're all based out of Abidjan which is about one to two hours flight maximum from each of our sites. Track record in construction. Uh, the group has built over the last uh, six years four mines, Enzema, Agbao, Bunde, and now delivering ET. The four of them, thanks to our in-house construction team, have been built on time and on budget, most of them ahead of schedule and slightly below budget. Recently, we've been building our two key projects, uh, which are now our key assets. Hunde and Iti. Uh, Hunde has been performing extremely well, was commissioned end of 2017 and did uh, 270,000 ounces this year at all in sustaining below 600. Iti CIA will be commissioned at the beginning of Q2 and we are expecting the same type of results from Iti. So overall with just two assets in two different countries, we are targeting above 500,000 ounces of annual production over more than 10 years and with an average all in sustaining around 650 and below. Just a quick uh, video on uh, ET and a project update. Uh, it's a bit uh, speed motion for the video, but uh, shows you I mean, the progress on the construction of the site. The TSF, which is nearly completed. Power station, which is 95% completed. So we have backup power station, but we are also connected to the grid. Primary crusher is completed, and in fact we've started uh, to uh, throw in some ore as we started the commissioning. <coughs> Conveyor belts all up and running. CIL plant ready for commissioning. Sag meal and ball meal up and running already. Detox that will be commissioned in February. We had to, uh, to do a bridge over uh, the river, which has been done. And the fleet has been working now for nine months. So all in all, good progress, and uh, we are expecting again, we are three months ahead of schedule, and we are expecting the uh, first gold pour around the beginning of uh, Q1. Exploration, we've been investing a lot in exploration. It's been one of our key motto. Uh, we expect to discover 10 to 15 million ounces over the next three years, and we've already made some good progress towards ET and Hyundai. Portfolio management has been a key uh, in our uh, strategy, basically selling non-core assets. Non-core assets means for me, you know, short my life, high cost, and focusing on assets which are into what I call the magic box, which is 10 year plus my life and below 800, 850 audience sustaining. And you see that in 2019, you know, we sold over the last three years four mines, and Zema, Yuga, Tabakoto, and ET Bleach is turning into ETCIL and we're getting towards this uh, kind of quality portfolio for the future. Balance sheet is uh, you know, strong. Uh, we still have a strong uh, source of liquidity and only $55 million to go to complete the ETCIL project. A strong portfolio of pipeline of uh, new projects, in particular on the Greenfield, to prepare the future with the Kalana project and Fetecro in Côte d'Ivoire, which will be potentially our next project. 
And overall, we spent over the last three years about a billion dollar capex in, in our assets. And now is the time to start generating strong cash flow and focus on return on capital employed in order to make sure that we can appropriately allocate our cash flow both to exploration, development of projects, deleveraging our balance sheet, and also dividend. Thank you very much.